Jessica Kumari is here with us now with a few choice words. <laughs> That's right, Justin. Well, according to the Global Language Monitor, the English language has almost one million words. Yet, despite all of those choices, one out of every 200 words the average person speaks is a cuss word. It's something one California teen is trying to change. Sitting in the schoolyard. Seventeen-year-old McKay Hatch has a passion for. Well, take a listen. Don't cuss. Don't cuss. And Anytime that's why he's cuss, fired up about something the vice Obama. president whispered into President Obama's ear at the health care bill signing ceremony. A not so nice word that was a big deal, especially after it was picked up by the mics at the podium. I was really, really disappointed that our vice president of the whole United States、um, actually said this. And it was heard by millions, including McKay, who's the president of the No Cussing Club. Many kids and adults all over the world look up to Vice President Biden as a role model. So, with that huge responsibility, he needs to be a good role model for kids and use clean and appropriate language. McKay isn't just speaking out; he's sending the vice president a T-shirt and a cuss jar that Mr. Biden can cough up money for every time he says a bad word. And McKay's not thinking a quarter per word. Maybe a、uh, hundred bucks. McKay has some experience pressuring politicians. Earlier this month, he delivered cuss jars to lawmakers in California, pushing for the adoption of a no cuss week in the state. I know we're all not perfect. I've actually already put five dollars in my jar. There wasn't a bad word said as the resolution sailed through the assembly. I have it. The measure has since stalled in the state senate, but in several other states, old laws still on the books do make cursing a crime. The fine for foul language in Mississippi is one hundred dollars. In Virginia, it's up to two hundred and fifty bucks. And in South Carolina, swearing in public could cost five thousand dollars under a bill now before the state senate. The vice president is not facing a steep fine, but on behalf of America's youth, McKay says he wants the VP to choose his words. Words have a lot of power, and that was one word that obviously offends people, and people don't like. McKay's No Cussing Club has chapters in all 50 states, and he also has a website where you can take the No Cussing Challenge. And to learn more about that, just go to channel1.com. Now, we'd also like to clarify a story we reported on last week. Initial reports showed Representative Randy Nagabauer calling Representative Bart Stupak a baby killer on the House floor. Well, Nagabauer issued a statement and said that he was not calling the congressman a baby killer. Nagabauer said he shouted, "It's a baby killer," and he was actually referring to a section of the health care bill. All right, thanks for that, Jess. And coming up next is pop quiz time. We're back and talking about music right now with guitar legend Joe Bonamassa. Hey guys, Joe Bonamassa here with today's music pop quiz. Blues music has been around for over 100 years, but do you know where it originated? That's your question. Who was known as the father of the blues? BB King. W. C. Handy, Muddy Waters, or Robert Johnson? Take ten seconds. Time's up. The answer is B. W. C. Handy. W. C. Handy is considered the founding father of the blues. The blues grew out of African spirituals and work songs brought over by the slaves. In the late 1800s, Southern African Americans passed the songs down orally, Won't you help me to raise them up? and they mixed the music with other styles such as American folk and country.、Oh, the music has changed again when amplifiers and electric guitars entered the scene in the late 1950s. Most bluesmen began to play the blues on electric instruments. From that point on, the blues continued to develop in new directions. Even today, it's influencing music and musicians such as Kanye West, Beyonce, and John Mayer. Thanks, Joe, and we've got more on Joe and the roots of music over at ChannelOne.com. Before we go, check out this one more thing. Check out these landmarks around the world go dark one by one. 
As part of the fourth annual Earth Hour celebration, buildings in some 4,000 cities in more than 120 countries unplug Saturday at 8.30 p.m. local time. Organizers said the event is aimed at reducing energy consumption and drawing attention to cutting greenhouse gas emissions. I think it's very important obviously for us to take a moment and really think about our impact on the environment and um, our place in um, making a positive change for the planet going forward. Produced in partnership with CBS News.